So from it's James normal. and the giant peach, and they're arguing about James's ears, because the grasshopper thinks that James's ears are ridiculous because they're on his head, because a grasshopper has got ears in his knees or legs. Pest cried the earthworm, "Why must you always be so rude and rum rambunctious, rambunctious to everyone?" You ought to apologise to James at once. That's the earthworm speaking. Mm. Chapter 25. James mm. didn't want the earthworm and the centipede to get into another argument. So he said quickly to the earthworm, Tell me, do you play any kind of music? No, but I do other things some of which are really quite extraordinary, the earthworm said, brightening. Such as what? said James. Well, the earthworm ex said, next time you stand in a field or in a garden and look around you, then just remember this, that every grain of soil on the surface of the land Every little bit of soil that you can see has actually passed through the body of an earthworm during the last five years. Isn't that wonderful? It's not possible, said James. My dear boy, it's a fact. You mean you actually swallow soil, said James? Like mad, the earthworm said proudly, in one end and out the other. But what's the point? said James. What do you mean, what's the point? Why, what do you do with it? We do it for the farmers, said the earthworm. It makes the soil nice and light and crumbly so that things will grow well in it. If you really want to know, the farmers couldn't do without us. We are essential. We are vital. Wait, Vital means necessary, important, needed, needed. If, if, if something's vital, it's needed. So it's only natural that the farmer should love us. He'd love us even more, I believe, than he loves the ladybird. The ladybird? said James, turning to look at her. Do they love you too? I am told that they do, the ladybird answered modestly, blushing all over and turning red to black spots. In fact, I understand that in some places the farmers love us so much that they go out and buy live ladybirds by the sackful and take them home and then set them free in their fields. They are very pleased when they have lots of ladybirds in their fields. But why? asked James. Because we gobble up all the nasty little insects that are gobbling up the farmer's crops. It helps enormously and we ourselves don't charge a penny for our services. I think you're wonderful, James told her. Can I ask you one special question? Please do. Well, is it really true that I can tell how old a lady bird is by counting her spots. Oh no, that's just a children's story, the ladybird said. We never change our spots. Some of us, of course, are born with more spots than others. But we never change them. The number of spots that a ladybird has is simply a way of showing which branch of the family she belongs to. I, for example, as you can see for yourself, I'm a nine-spotted ladybird. I am very lucky. It is a fine thing to be. It is indeed, said James, gazing at the beautiful scarlet shell with nine black spots on it. On the other hand, the ladybird went on, some of my less fortunate relatives have no more than two spots altogether on their shelves. Can you imagine that? They're called two-spotted ladybirds, and very common and ill-mannered they are too, I regret to say. And then, of course, you have the five-spotted ladybirds as well. 
They are much nicer than the, than, than the two spotted ones, though although I myself find them a trifle too saucy for my taste. Pardon? But they are all loved, said James. Yes, said the ladybird, quietly. They are all of them loved. Why? I'm tired of love friends. It seems almost everyone around here is loved, said James. How nice this is. Not me, cried the centipede happily. I am a pest, and I am proud of it. Oh, I am such a shocking, dreadful pest. Here, here, the earthworm said. But what about you, Mother Spider? asked James. But Aren't you also much loved in the where, world? Where is, where is Mother? Alas, no, Miss Spider Mom, answered, Daddy, sighing long and loud. Daddy, I am not loved what? at all. And Daddy, why spider or ladybug is loved? Well, apparently the spider is not loved, and we'll find out why not. Lie down, but the ladybird is loved because it eats all the nasty bugs in the farmer's field. So the farmers like uh, the but, ladybirds. But, 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 who's, well, who's loved? The ladybird is loved. But, but who's, a, who's the mother? But, but, I hear the mother. There's no mother. Is no, that, well, it could be a mummy spider, but it doesn't say. I don't know. Yes, exactly. it says. So the ask, James is asking about the spider to see if the spider's loved. And the spider replies, "I am not loved at all, and yet I do nothing but good. All day long, I catch flies and mosquitoes in my webs. I am a decent person." I know you are," said James. It's very unfair the way we spiders are treated, Miss Spider went on. Why, only last week your own horrible Aunt Sponge flushed my poor dear father down the plug hole in the bathtub. Oh, how awful, said James. I watched the whole thing from a corner up in the ceiling, Miss Spider murmured. It was ghastly. We never saw him again. A large tear rolled down her cheek and fell with a splash on the floor. Why, why, why splash? Well, when, when the tears drop on the floor, they splash. They go. Mm. <laughs> but isn't it very unlucky to kill a spider? James inquired, looking around at the others. Oh, of course, it's unlucky to kill a spider! Shouted the centipede. It's all. It's about the unluckiest thing anyone can do. Look what happened to Aunt Sponge after she'd done that. Bump! We all felt it didn't we, as the peach went over her. Oh, what a lovely bump that must have been for you, Miss Spider. It was very satisfactory, Miss Spider answered. Will you sing us each a song about it, please? So the centipede did, and here's the song. Aunt Sponge was terribly fat and tremendously flabby at that. Her tummy and waist were as soggy as paste. It was worse on the place where she sat. So she said, I must make myself flat. I must make myself sleek as a cat. I shall do without dinner to make myself thinner. But along came the peach. Oh, the beautiful peach and made her far thinner than that. Oh, that was very nice, Miss Spider said. Now sweet sing one about Aunt Spiker. With pleasure, the centipede answered, grinning. Aunt Spiker was thin as a wire, and dry as a bone, only drier. She was so long and thin, if you carried her in a tin, you could hear, you could use her for packing the, for poking the fire. I must do something quickly, she frowned. I want fat, I want pound upon pound. I must eat lots and lots of marshmallows and chocks till I start bulging all around. 
Ah, yes, she announced. I have sworn that I'll alter my figure by dawn. Cried the peach with a snigger. I'll give you your figure and and her out on the lawn. Everybody clapped and called out for more songs from the centipede, who at once launched into his favourite song of all. Are you ready for it? Yes. And this is the end of the chapter when we finish the song. No! Once upon a time when pigs were swine and monkeys chewed tobacco and hens took snuff to make themselves tough and ducks said quack, 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 quacko and porcupines drank fiery wines and goats ate tapioca and old Mother Hubbard got stuck in the cupboard Look out, said a bead, crabs James, look out! And we'll find out what he's at the end of the chapter. Daddy, we'll find out tomorrow what he's looking at. More. Well, I'm a bit tired. Um, it, uh, Let me have a quick look. Just bear with me for a second. Oh, it's a very short chapter, so I'll read it. Okay. <laughs> Last chapter, chapter 26. And then we go to bed, alright? No, no, but first I'll do see which is, which is the, which is the, 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 the page of the, the back page. The centipede, who had begun dancing wildly around the deck during the song, had suddenly gone too close to the downward curving edge of the peach, and for three awful seconds he had stood teetering on the brink, swinging his legs frantically in circles in an effort to stop himself falling over backwards into space. But before anyone could reach him, down he went. He gave a shriek of terror as he fell, and the others, rushing to the side of the peach and peering over, saw his long, poor body tumbling over and over through the air, getting smaller and smaller until he was out of sight. Silkworm! yelled James. Quick, start spinning! The silkworm sighed, for she was very tired from spinning all that silk for the seagulls, but she did as she was told. I'm going down after him, cried James, grabbing the silk string as it started coming out of the silkworm and tying the end of it around his waist. The rest of you hold on the silkworm so I don't pull it over the edge with me. And later on, if you feel three tugs on the string, tug, tug, tug. That's three tugs like this. Tug, tug, tug. <laughs> Again. And if you feel three tugs on the string like this, one, two, three. <laughs> then you have to pull me up. So if you three feel the three tugs, start hauling me up again. He jumped and went tumbling down after the centipede, down, down, down towards the sea below. And you can imagine how quickly the silkworm had to spin to keep up with the speed of his fall. We'll never see them again, cried the ladybird. Oh dear, oh dear, just when we were getting along all together so well, all so happily too. Miss Spider the glowworm and the ladybird all began to cry. So did the earthworm. Why? I don't care a bit about the centipede, the earthworm it, said. It's in there. The earthworm sobbed. But I do really love that little boy called James. Where is he? He's got over the edge of the earthworm, uh, sorry, over the edge of the peach to try and get the, was it the grasshopper who fell? Yeah, the grasshopper. And the, um, the centipede? So he's going down, the grasshopper's falling, and James is going falling as fast as he can to try and grab the grasshopper. And he's got the silkworm's silk tied round his waist to stop him from going too far. Miss Spider, the glowworm, and the ladybird all began to cry. So did the earthworm. I don't care a bit about the centipede, the earthworm said, sobbed. But I do, I did, I really did love that boy. Very softly, the old green grasshopper started to play the funeral march on his violin. By the, and by the time he had finished, everyone, including himself, was in a flood of tears. Suddenly, there came three sharp tugs on the rope. Pull! shouted the old green grasshopper. Everyone get behind and pull. So there they are, all pulling up, pulling James up. There was about a mile of string to be hauled in, but they all worked like mad, and in the end, 
Over the side of the peach, there appeared a dripping wet James with a dripping wet centipede, <laughs> clinging to him tightly with all 42 legs, with all 42 of his legs. So it's the centipede went over the edge, not the grasshopper. And took his little he off he his. saved me, gasped the centipede. He swam around in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean until he found me. My dear boy, the old Greek grasshopper said, patting James on the back. I do congratulate you. My boots, cried the centipede. Just look at my precious boots. They're all ruined by the water. Be quiet, the earthworm said. You are lucky to be alive. Are we still going up and up? asked James. We certainly are, answered the old green grasshopper. Grasshopper. And it's beginning to get dark. I know, it'll soon be night. Why don't we all go down below and keep warm until tomorrow morning? Miss Spider suggested. No, the old green grasshopper said. I think that would be very unwise. It will be safer if we all stay up here through the night and keep watch. Then if anything happens, we shall be, we shall anyway be ready for it. And that's the end of the chapter. And now it definitely is the end. Can I maybe see the next chapter? You can see it, but uh, there you are. Oh. But we've got to the end now. That first word is giant. So the next word is peach. Peach? A giant peach. It does say giant peach. It doesn't have the word the in front or the word a. A giant peach. Good night now. See you in the morning. Is the giant peach one of your favourite stories? Do you want to listen to the story again? Aiden? Do you want to listen to the story again on the... Yeah. Okay, get in bed then I'll tell, let, put it on. Okay, you can put that in bed, but you get in bed. Oh, I put that on Get in bed. I'll start it.